Hello and welcome back to another SPSS tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover the generation of frequency polygons in SPSS. So let's be clear up front. Frequency polygons are, for, are used for representing a specific type of continuous data. Specifically, frequency polygons are for representing data that is continuous and not discrete, meaning that we can have very detailed and precise measurements of this data that can fall anywhere uh, along a range of values, right? So if we look at our data set, we have this variable called time where we're capturing measurements at a precision of two decimal places, right? So we can have a lot of different measurements at a lot of different places in the data set. And because we can have those measurements at so many different points along a range, it's not gonna be, we're not gonna want that data to fall into specific buckets or categories or bars like we would represent with a histogram, we want to just get an idea of, of kind of the general flow of that data from low measurements to high measurements. And so the type of graph that we use for that is called a frequency polygon. So in order to generate a frequency polygon, we click up here on the graphs menu and go to chart builder. And frequency polygons can be found in the histogram area. So this third option in the histogram area is the frequency polygon graph. So we'll drag and drop that up into our workspace. And then we need to just select the variable that we want to represent in our histogram. We'll use our time variable and drag that down onto the x-axis. And at a basic level, we can just create a, a frequency polygon the, the way that we want SPSS to kind of figure out the rest. So we click OK. And if we look on our workspace here, we've got a general frequency polygon. You'll notice there are no bars, there are no specific places where anything, any of the measurement buckets ends or starts, right? We just have this kind of flow from 0 to 300 of the number of minutes that our participants spent training for the bike race in the first week of training. And at regularly spaced intervals along that SPSS picks points and connects those points in terms of the, the frequency of participants that kind of fell within given ranges. So you can think of this, it's, it's kind of similar to a histogram in that SPSS is finding these points and it's, it's representing the frequency or the number of participants that were included at specific points. So it is still kind of, if you want to call it bucketing or, or putting observations into a range of values, but we don't get the bars, so it doesn't imply that there's any necessary stop and start to, to the values that it can hold. That's, that's the whole point of a frequency polygon, uh, frequency polygon, is because there are no bars, it's conveying to the reader, it's saying that all these measurements are very detailed and that they can exist really anywhere along this continuum of, of the x-axis. We're still representing frequency, so we're getting an idea of how likely or how often measurements along this x-axis occurred, and we can play around with that in the chart properties. But the fact that there are no bars represents the type of data that we're working with. So let's go back into the chart builder, and we can play around with the properties of this a little bit. And a lot of this will be very familiar if you already looked at the tutorial on histogram. So we can set parameters in the same way. So SPSS is still generating bins. So we can still start the anchor at zero if we want. We can customize the size of each bin. So we can say how many intervals are we going to have. Now these aren't going to be represented as bars in a frequency polygon. They're going to be represented as the points at the top of the polygon. right? So we can have, let's say, five intervals, meaning there'll be five different points or places where SPSS connects the dot along the top of the, the frequency polygon. So click continue, click apply, click OK. And it really just changes what our chart looks like. Now again, for reasons that I'm not too clear on, SPSS will, even though we asked for five intervals, it really only gave us three. It gave us this first point here where it started, a second point here at around 110 or so minutes, and then a third point here around 200 and let's say 60 minutes. 
and that's it. And then it has some empty intervals out here as well. So just like we did with the histogram, in order to get a, a graph that we like, we like what it looks like, we think it represents the data well, we can play with this a little bit. Instead of setting the number of intervals, we can set interval width. And so remember, we're dealing with minutes here. Let's say we want each interval or bucket to capture a range of about 50 training minutes. So click Continue, click Apply, click OK. And then we get kind of a different looking frequency polygon. So at each point here, we're representing a difference of about 50 minutes worth of training. And then SPS is giving us the frequency of the number of participants that fell within that range. And then it's filling in the chart underneath that area that's created by, by defining these points. So again, you can play around in order to get a chart that you think represents your data well, but the point being that a frequency polygon conveys information about continuous data that is not discrete, meaning we can have measurements really at anywhere along this x-axis, and we want to just kind of, in, in creating the frequency polygon and in, in customizing some of the characteristics of it, we're just trying to define the points along the top of this graph where SPSS sums up the data within it and tells us how many observations fell into the categories that, that we're creating or the intervals that we're creating. All right, hopefully that's helpful. Check back and check out some of the other tutorials that are gonna give you a basic understanding of the simple descriptive statistics that you can display using SPSS.